Good morning, folks. We had a problem that we have now solved. It's, it's honestly almost embarrassing to admit, but we really sucked at figuring out the right way to store uh, fixture plates. And the prior incarnation that we had come up with, um, I thought was gonna be great, and it, and it wasn't. So the prior incarnation was we built these wood pallets that were carpet lined that stored the plates vertically. Um, it is actually decent on the density of the product, but it ends up very difficult to lift them in and out. Uh, way too much risk that you're banging them into each other. Uh, difficult to do visual inventory. And even if that with best of intentions, debris or even chips can get into that carpet. It's very difficult to clean and you risk scratching, et cetera, et cetera. So we had to go back to the drawing board. And here's the thing, I suck at some, I suck at a lot of versions of CAD design, but especially things that are around sheet metal and I didn't have a way to make it. And so we solved those two problems in this video in a way that I think is really cool and worth sharing. So I had this idea that I knew we wanted to store these like records uh, in a record store or uh, I've seen an art gallery that had prints lined up like this. I just thought, hey, this makes a lot of sense um, to get the visual or the density of the product, make use of our pallet racking um, and make it safer to pull them in and out. It's also really good when we do periodic inventory audits to be able to just go through visually and look at them uh, versus in these other bins where it just kind of, it just was a lot more difficult. Um, the idea with this to scale it as well is they are now size specific. So what we see here, we have a 12 inch plates, 16 inch plates and 20 inch plates. Uh, but we're already gonna build more of these and those can then become certain specific to certain brands or even certain models that we know are really popular. Um, so the two sort of takeaways though are number one, I didn't have a good way of making this and I wanted it to be well done. So I sketched up a really good proof of concept and I did what I've so much so often talked about, um, which is used Upwork. Now we use Upwork a lot, but I haven't used it in such a concise, you know, eat one and done way like this, which is what got me fired up put the project up on Upwork, had selected a designer within a few days, and for under oh, $200, I think it was actually under $100, $150, had a CAD model with prints and a solid model done. And what I love about this is it reminds me back when I was struggling to get started in this whole journey over 10 years ago with Strike Mark, trying to build that uh, auto reset rifle target, is that if you go to a job shop or a manufacturer, or sheet metal shop or machine shop, and you just have an idea, you're not gonna get the same reaction as if you go to them and you have a print or a drawing. And even if they wanna change that print or make some sort of a tweak, you just look so much further along and you're really changing the, the what you're asking of that vendor. So I was pretty fired up. I really liked what the Upwork designer uh, came up with and I thought, perfect, we can at least build a few of these. We can always tweak them later if we have to. Um, but then I hit problem number two, which is that I had planned on calling a, a pretty good local area friend to fab these up plasma or laser them and then they've got a press break. They're a sheet metal fab shop. I just thought, hey, this is a easy slam dunk for them and, and we've done each other some favors over the years. Well, long story short, he said no. Um, and I think it's a great, example of the problem in this day and age and it's nothing against him personally but they're busy and frankly they didn't want to fart around with a little project like this and you know maybe if i'd really leaned on him and asked him he could have but it's kind of one of those look if they're busy they don't want to do it don't push it uh, and that's when the light bulb went off i remember cj uh who i've gotten over the years and has a willeman which we're excited to get ours. Um, he had just sent a little bracket over to Send Cut Send to make something for his air blast or an air knife on his conveyor. And uh, what that initially prompted was uh, a month or two ago, we had a problem with our Okuma um, Gaylord tote bin here uh, where the wheels that we had put under it to wheel it in and out, they just weren't quite strong enough having secured the pivot bracket straight into that. and. So we needed something super simple. Uh, and side note, this kind of upset me to have to send this out as the you know bootstrap entrepreneur, but I realized, what are we doing? Like for me to buy some quarter inch plate steel and cut it out or saw it out or whatever, machine it out and then drill holes in it, just send these out. So we sent them out. I think I have an extra one laying around here. We ordered one more as a backup. I mean, this is so simple uh, work and they work great. So when I needed these brackets made and my buddy told me, sorry, I can't do them, I just thought, wait a minute here, I wonder if Send Cut Send can do these. And uh, we had 
uploaded them, checked to see can they do press brake stuff, and they can. Uh, and I'll tell you, it actually worked great. I kind of see why this model works. We're not sheet metal experts. I don't want to build a relationship with a vendor, start cold calling people, taking up that time. I just wanted something uploaded, done, and sent to me. Uh, so we then ordered some HDPE from Alro, who we buy a lot of plastics and other material from. We picked up some one inch tubing. Uh, we just cut it, uh, welded it together real quick, and then we uh, put these, actually, attach the uh, HDPE sheets to the frame because that kept them from warping. We did one the other way and it warped quite a bit, which wasn't an issue. Um, we've held it with vacuum, but moving to that flow where we actually just self self secured them in place with that uh, one inch frame worked great and they are a huge win. We Everybody here already loves them. And what's great is that they're actually fairly easy to move in and out you know, one person can lift the smaller plates, two people can come over safely for the larger plates. We've got a visual inventory. These barcodes all tie into our ERP system Lex, and it's really a nice improvement over the system that we used to use, uh, which we're gonna still use for now until we can sort of phase it out of having these carpet line bins. And these are gonna be, make better use of vertical space so we can add uh, more storage rack spaces to them. You know, I had thought about putting forklift compatible things below them. I mean, we could easily lift them up with some two by fours or, or steel things, but we just don't need to. We don't plan on, on relocating these and I don't really want to take up the space, but it is something I'm guessing somebody will say. So I wanted to mention that we did think of that, um, but it's a real win. Uh, again, the idea that we get a really professionally designed thing out of Upwork for pretty inexpensive and then we just order these things and they show up uh, made really was a win. So as always folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.